Big Dig. This is a very simple filler type game published by TMG. In this game, players will draw on their personal board, creating nets of tunnels. They're trying to complete three tasks that will change every game, and the first player to complete all three tasks wins the game. Now, more in detail, what you see here are the components of the game. We have a very short rule book, we have some dry arrays, markers, we have boards. Each player will take one, they're double sided and they show different paths on each side. But whichever side you choose, you need to make sure that all players have the same side up. And suppose that we decide to play with that one, so now that's my board. I got my little marker here. And then we have two sets of cards. These cards here with Tetris-like shapes. They are placed in the middle of the table where everybody can see them. And then we have the tasks or objectives. So we shuffle these face down and then we draw three randomly and we place them in an area where everybody can see them. And basically the first player that will complete these tasks wins the game. And these are the tasks that we have this time, but as you can see there's a lot of them so there are many chances that you will get the two tasks every time. And actually I'm gonna show these tasks here because they are fun. Now, <clears throat> what happens during the game? Super simple. When it is your turn, you choose one of the cards that are in the middle. Suppose I choose this one. And then you draw a tunnel of the same shape on your personal map. You can rotate it, you can even mentally flip it, mirror-like. And for that to be valid, it needs to either touch one of the surface squares here and or to orthogonal extent from a previous duct tunnel. Also, uh, these beige squares here, you can dig into them, through them normally and so for the ancient coins and so for these gems here and so for these pipes, etc. So for the oil, so for the water. But you cannot, you can never dig into this ancient skeleton and, and this like Rosetta Stone type of thing because then you're committing a crime against culture so you can never enter those spaces. You can excavate around them though. Also, the rock spaces, they need to be excavated with a specific, with a specific procedure that is instead of choosing a card and drawing those lines there, you can spend your turn declaring that you're exploding a square and then you simply can uh, can fill that square and that you can you can use the explosion to fill any specific square but that is the only way that you can go through rock and for example in this game here the task is to connect the pipes so I need to create a line that goes from here to here I need to deliver oil that means I need to create a line that connects the this thing here with the oil source and I need to mine all of the amethyst that means I need to cover all of those areas. So I take this car, next player takes another card, another car, maybe next player explodes a rock, um, then I take this card, the other player takes this card and basically we continue like this until all cards have been assigned so there are not there are no cards available in the middle of the table anymore. In which case we return them, but we flip them. Plot twists. Yes, these cards are double-sided. So now we have a different set of shapes. And again, we select and we cross. We select and we cross. So for example, suppose I selected that one. Then it's a four straight. And I do one, two, three, four. As simple as that. And then later I take this card here and I do like, oh, no, you know what? I'm going to take this one instead because I don't even know that's a great idea. But it looked it look good at the time. Two that way. 
two that way and one here i'll need to explode something to connect that one but i'm, I'm getting closer i'm getting closer and then maybe later why would i ever select that one i select this one and i go like this because i'm trying to go to the oil yeah in fact it would have been better maybe to turn it differently to turn this one uh, remember i was there right to turn it this way would it work yeah one two three and that one so this is how it works you are digging around things through things oh i want to explode this rock next turn just for the fun of it explode stuff dig through stuff and the first player to complete Lead all tasks so wins the game. It is that simple. As for the other tasks, in case you're curious, you explode stones, excavate the tablet so you dig all around it, uh, get all coins, deliver water instead of oil, and dig out the center. That means this area here with the lighter beige background, you need to excavate them all. So this is how you play uh, Dig Dug. Oh, nope, L -l -l lapses there. Slip of the tongue, Big Dig. Although it does remind me of Dig Dug, the old video game. But there are monsters there. Here is much, much more relaxed. It is a relaxed game, definitely. Especially if you play with three or four players, it is pretty much a multiplayer solo because players have enough to think about to optimize their choices, to think about what other players are doing and to try to prevent the opponents from accomplishing certain things by selecting certain cards. Uh, you will just select the card that you need and, and then you hope that the opponent is not left with, with something that's too useful. At a certain point, out of the blue, someone will say, I won! And you'll be like, oh, okay, I, I didn't, I thought I was going to win. With three, four players, it definitely feels like a multiplayer solo. Now, with two players, it can get more tactical because then I'm looking at your board and looking at mine, and then, yes, maybe I can decide to take a card just for the sake of depriving you of that card that you so desperately need. But still, it's not a main, a main element, which, of course, for somebody is going to be great because it means that the game does not feel very... Um, very oppositional is not very aggressive yeah i do your thing you i do my thing you do yours and let's see who can optimize things better i like the fact that there are multiple objectives so things are very different of course they're not dramatically different delivering oil and even water is not that different however you know there is a game in which i do have to do those things so, as opposed to other things well the flow is different the challenges are different I guess some of the stuff that's uh, less interesting to me is like when you explode five stones. It's probably the least interesting object to me because it well, pretty much means waste five turns. Well, waste, well, spend five turns just uh, exploding a single thing. It's not too exciting. However, if you can figure out a way of doing it on your way as you're accomplishing other things uh, to maximize uh, your actions, then I guess can be okay too. Just a little less interesting. But still, the idea is, well, you're trying to perform multiple services in a single trip, and that's really what the game is about. It's very relaxed, very simple. Everybody can pick it up and figure it out in a minute. Uh, it doesn't require reading. If you're playing with a four-year-old, you just tell them what the objectives are and they can definitely play. They won't play very well, but they can play. So there, there is that. And of course, kids love to draw and make a big mess. So you can play with kids, you can play with adults. It's not a game of great depth, despite the theme. Uh, it's a simple filler, really. It's simple, simple filler. When you have 10 minutes in a game night at the beginning or between games, and you want something that is really simple to set up because it's almost immediate setup, you can teach it in a minute and you can play in 10 15. Well, then Big Dig definitely could be a good option. Uh, I hope it doesn't cause analysis paralysis, so we haven't experienced that, but I see how it could potentially happen if somebody takes it too seriously, but that is not the spirit of the game. It's a simple, relaxing, fun game, which is about picking up Tetris pieces and drawing on your board. There is a simple primeval fun in just eh, doing that. 
However, not a very big, not a very big game, of course, that's obvious, which however also means it travels well. Not a very deep game, not a very sophisticated game, but in the in the right state of mind for a crowd that is looking for a light game, definitely an entertaining option.